Okay, let's have a look at the different kinds of directors in a company. First, we come to the differences between executive directors, EDs, and non-executive directors, NEDs. This is the most common division of directors. Non-executive directors can be further divided into affiliated non-executive directors or independent non-executive directors. Executive directors wear two hats. One is being an employee of a company, usually a senior executive, and the other is being a member of the board. Executive directors in Australia are similar to inside directors in the United States. In unlisted public and proprietary companies, it's often more difficult to separate the roles of managing and governing a company. The owners of such companies often manage the company as well. So technically, they are executive directors. In not-for-profit organizations, executive directors are quite rare. The board delegates significant management and administrative functions to the ED. The executive function of management and administration of the company is the essential characteristic of an executive director. Executive directors are common in public companies because of their large scale of business and operations. According to the Corporations Act, all directors, no matter, no, no matter whether they are executive or non-executive, they have the same level of duties and responsibilities. However, some courts suggested that executive directors may have a greater level of responsibilities than non-executive directors. As executive directors, they have a much more detailed knowledge of a company and its issues and problems. They have greater access to information. They have a range of technical skills and knowledge. Therefore, it's reasonable to require them to have a greater level of duties and responsibilities than non-executive directors. A non-executive director is someone who is a director but not a full-time employee of the organization. Affiliated non-executive director have present or previous connection with the company. They may be former managers, significant shareholders, or have material business relationships with the company. Independent NEDs are independent of management. They have no business or other relationships that may materially affect their independent judgment. Non-executive directors can be effective part-time employees. They work for the company and advise the company at a director level, but they do not take an executive position. The cost savings can be dramatic. The NEDs are not directly involved in the daily management of a company. They work on a part-time and intermittent basis for the company. They attend the meetings of the board or board committees. Non-executive directors have several important functions. They formulate an organization's strategic direction. They can bring an independent and fresh perspective to decision making. They support and mentor the CEO. They review, approve, and monitor the business plan and annual budget. They monitor risks facing the organization. 
Of course, they should comply with the legal requirements of being a director. The perceived advantages of non-executive directors is their independence and objectivity. Their ability to act in the best interest of the company. Their independent judgments are not compromised by their connections with their company. However, there have been many different findings about the value of the NEDs. Over the past decades, it has been widely accepted that a majority of directors on boards of listed companies should be independent, non-executive directors. In addition, the chairperson of a public company should be a non-executive director. In many large public companies, only the CEO and possibly the CFO are able to be directors in addition to their positions as executives. The, co the corporate governance principles and recommendations made by the Australian Securities Exchange recommend that the majority of the board of listed companies should be independent. This is also the practice in many other countries if the board decides not to follow this recommendation, it must explain why. In short, they must comply or explain why not. However, there is no conclusive evidence that boards with only independent directors perform better than the boards with both independent and non-independent directors. I recently published an article on the dilemmas of independent directors. I found that, globally, independent directors of listed companies face similar dilemmas in performing their duties. First, what's the standard of independence? Should it be based on connections and involvement with the company? or should it be based on the behavior and mindset of independence? Second, information is very important in order for independent directors to make robust decisions. However, they don't work for the company on a full-time basis. Therefore, they may not have enough information. In particular, the management may hide negative information. Third, all of us are limited by our expertise, time, and knowledge. And this is the same for independent directors. If you are an independent director, but you have no accounting knowledge, how can you or how can we expect you to discover accounting problems of the company. Fourth, it's also difficult for independent directors to have proper distance from management. If they stay far away from management, they don't have a good understanding of the business. But without a good understanding of the business, how can they properly perform their monitoring duties? However, if they are too close to the management, their independence and objectivity may be compromised. Finally, the independent directors worked on a part-time basis for the company, but they have the same duties and responsibilities as the full-time executive directors. Is it reasonable? These dilemmas are not being effectively addressed by the law and the practice globally. A managing director is an executive director who sits on the board and also manages the company. In listed companies, 
the most common executive director is the CEO or managing director. In some organizations, the two positions are held by the same person. In the Commonwealth Bank, for example, the same person concurrently serves in the two positions. A managing director is different from a CEO. The two terms are often used interchangeably, but actually they are different. The CEO is the operational head. He or she is the board employee. A managing director fulfills the CEO's role, but it's also a board member. It's a board member. Managing directors or CEOs should have deep knowledge of their business. They should know the company's strategy and direction very well. They should have technical expertise in their functional area. For example, financing, accounting, or law. In this role, they have greater access to, inf to company information than non-executive directors. A managing director is above an executive director. A managing director can fire an executive director from his job. However, if there is no managing director or CEO in an organization, the executive director will in charge of the management. No matter whether or not a CEO is a director, he or she is an officer under the Corporations Act 2001. Therefore, he or she is subject to many of the same duties as a director under their act. For example, these include the duty to act in good faith, the duty to act for a proper purpose, and the duty to act with care and diligence. The most important duties of the chairperson is presiding over a meeting and having procedural control over the meeting. This includes nominating who is to speak, dealing with the order of business, putting questions to the meeting, declaring resolutions to be carried or defeated, asking for general business and closing the meeting. For listed companies, the chair has significant corporate governance responsibilities. The chair provides leadership for the board. Duties in this regard include facilitating the provision of proper and sufficient information to the board, facilitating the effective functioning of the board, and communicating the views of the board to the organization's shareholders broader stakeholders, and the public. The chair is also an important link between the board and the organization's management. Please note that it's the board members rather than the organization's members or the shareholders to appoint the chair. To repeat, the chair is appointed by the board members, not the shareholders. The role of the chair is not defined in the Corporations Act 2001. Therefore, many functions of the chair are customary rather than formalized by law. In Australia and many other countries of the world, accepted good corporate governance practices recommends that the chair should be an independent director. However, there are different opinions and findings on this proposition. Here I'm using some big companies in Australia to show their board structures. In the Commonwealth Bank, there are 11 directors. One is the chairman, 
One is the managing director, and at the same time, the CEO. And the remaining nine are independent, non-executive directors. BHP Billiton has nine directors. One is the independent chairperson, and the remaining eight are also independent directors. Please note, the CEO is not a director in this company. For West Farmers, there are nine directors. The board includes a non-executive chairman, a managing director, and seven non-executive directors. The managing director is concurrently the CEO. This information is from the official statements. We can see that some of the titles are slightly different in different companies. An alternate director is appointed by a director to exercise some or all of the appointing director's powers for a specific period. When directors cannot fulfill their duties and responsibilities, appointing an alternate is a useful way. They may be absent for one or more board meetings because of surgery, jury duty, a long holiday, etc. The appointment of an alternate director is subject to the board approval and must be given in writing. ASIC must be notified within 28 days of the appointment. If the alternate director exercises a director's duty, then it's as effective as if exercised by the director. If the director is present at a board meeting, the alternate director has no legal status. A nominee director is a director appointed to the board by an appointer to represent the interests of the appointer. The appointer generally is a particular shareholder or creditor. A holding company usually has the power to appoint directors to the board of its subsidiary. If you are to establish a joint venture with others, each party also has the right to nominate a specific number of nominee directors.